Hi, I'm Ruth Friedman, Director of the Office of Child Care at the Administration for Children and Families with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Recently, our team notified the public that we have proposed changes to the Child Care and Development Fund. That's a federal program that funds states, tribes, and territories to provide subsidies to families to help them afford child care. Our proposals are designed to lower families' child care costs, to increase families' child care options, and to improve child care provider payment rates and practices. These proposed changes are currently posted online and open for public comment through August 28, 2023. As you review the proposed changes and consider commenting on how the proposal will impact you and your program, I'd like to share an overview of what they are intended to do for child care providers. The proposed changes are aimed at strengthening the payment rates and practices that state programs use to pay participating child care providers. We do this in a number of ways. First, we propose to require states to ensure timely provider payments by making prospective or upfront payments to ensure childcare providers are paid on time, requiring states to use enrollment-based payments to participating providers instead of basing their payments on child attendance, and requiring states to offer some grant and contract funded options to parents for types of care that are particularly difficult to find, and encouraging states to pay participating providers the full rate established by the state, tribe, or territory. We believe that moving to payment practices like paying prospectively and paying based on enrollment will help providers participating in the child care subsidy program have the financial stability they need to remain open to serve families. Additionally, the proposal to require states to offer some grant and contract funded options to parents is critical to help build the supply of childcare options that can currently be difficult for our families to find. Things like infant and toddler care, care for children with disabilities, and care during non-traditional hours. Finally, the proposal would make it clear that states are permitted to pay providers at the full established child care subsidy payment rate, even if that is more than the rate the child care provider charges families without subsidy. This is important because as you know, the price of child care is dictated by what parents can afford to pay, not the true cost of care, which is out of reach for many families. This undermines provider stability, it dampens child care supply, constrains child care wages, and shuts many families out from accessing high quality care. As I mentioned, the proposed changes are open for public comment period, and you can review the full proposal and provide your comments through www.regulations.gov. You should search by docket number ACF-2023-0003. Public comment is really helpful to our efforts to make sure this program works well for families and providers. Please know that we want to review all of your comments and questions, but our team can only address comments made directly through the official federal government portal. I hope you check it out, and we look forward to learning your thoughts.